What's up, fantasy people? This is Tyler, Big Turd Ward, and Jason, the Lucky Bastard Youth and Wolf, coming at you live from the West Coast. And this is the Fantasy Football and Show. Today's episode, the draft is tomorrow, Jason. Yesterday, we went over the, uh, <laughs> Excited. the quarterbacks and tight ends. You know, as far as fantasy goes, there was one tight end that might, you know, make a difference this season. But for the most part, rookie tight ends don't do anything. We pointed out the rookie quarterbacks that we think might be pick worth picking up. Today, we're going to go over the running backs and the wide receivers. This is an amazing running back class. And from what I've heard, and it seems like it's super deep. We only went five deep today, but you could go 10 deep. I mean, dude, there's a lot of starting running backs in this draft class. And there's a lot of like difference. It's not like they're all like, you know, cookie cutter or whatever. There's like, dude, super light guys, super heavy guys. Um, Anyways, and then the wide receiver class is supposed to not be that great jason um but i think we're going to point out at least two or three people that i think are going to be uh you know worth picking up on your fantasy roster it might make a difference you know maybe not justin jefferson difference but hey chris olave difference stuff like that but before we get into all of that jason would you tell the public how they can help this show yeah um if you guys made it this far thank you and to add to that if you guys give us a sub a subscription why is that the hardest word Every time I try to say that word, I always mess up the first time. If you can hit the subscribe button, we appreciate We love the support. Um, also, give us some likes. We like the likes. And give us some comments. We enjoy the comments. We love the interaction with people, even if they're bad. Good or bad. But take it all. We appreciate everything. If you can continue with the support, um, please do so. And if you want some additional content, Follow us on Instagram at the Fancy Football and Show. Correct, Jason. Thank you for that. So, uh, getting right into this, Mama said, m m m Mama said, there is a consensus number one running back, Jason. And uh, I mean, we're the wide receiver. I've 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 saw a bunch of different lists of you know the top wide receivers. That's kind of a mixed bag of stuff. But dude, every single running back list that I look at has Bijan Robinson on top. So. He is my number one. I would almost have the next dude up oh, oh, above him, but Bijan has the size. So, Jason, how do you feel about Bijan? Uh, is that his name, Bijan? I was yeah, because well, he's got Bijan. He's got his own Bijan mustard. So I yeah. know that, like, as I just listened to an interview with him, and like some Bijan, but it's only sold locally, but it's gonna hit the big. It's gonna hit the big stores pretty soon. So look out for the Bijan Dijon mustard. I kept calling him. Uh, I was talking to him took to my wife about this guy i kept calling him by jane <laughs> man this by jane is amazing have you seen this guy um all right b john robinson from texas uh when i went over his highlight reels uh some of the stuff that i saw some of the takes i want to bring to you guys first off was his vision this guy he was able to i, I feel like he was able to see all the tacklers coming at him at once and he was able to be like all right i'm gonna go here go here go here, here and then bam and he was able to hit those gaps in the um, offensive line, which is superb. The dude is strong. I think he, I believe he led the league in uh, broken tackles this year. Like, it's crazy hard to, like, bring this guy down. Um, <laughs> I think he has a, a special ability. If we're going back to Madden, it's almost like the elusive or, I don't know if there was actually another one for it, but it was like the spin move. This guy. It's elusive. No, it's elusive. You're right. Yeah. So, like, the elusive icon, like, this guy, I would just see it, like, just about every highlight and every game. He did it probably, like, four times at four different players. He's like, bloop, 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 bloop. Bam. It was like, <laughs> bam. Um, one thing I do really like about this guy, that he runs in and out of the line of scrimmage. Like, you can see him going up the middle, and you can see him going around. Um, he had good hands. I saw him make some remarkable catches as um, catching passes from the quarterback. Uh, I saw. I noticed that he was patient too on his runs, like he's letting uh, the blocking form out. Um, his cutbacks, he had. He was one way, other way. He had amazing cutbacks. Um, and one thing I noticed that he like this goes along with uh, breaking tackles. He like always made the first guy miss. The first guy that would come and tackle him, he always like made him miss. So it's like you're gonna have to like gang tackle this dude. Um, and he doesn't slow down. Like he would get his speed, and no matter if there was a tackler or if there was doing a juke, it's like he maintained that speed the whole time. It was just, I think I, I think it was incredible to watch for me. I think he's going to be a pretty good 
running back. Um, to go out a little bit more, his measurements at the NFL Combine, Tyler, he was 5'11", uh, 215. His 40 time was 4.46. His 10-yard split was 1.52, uh, which it was a little bit faster, but I think – so I, it's, I don't think there's, like, one thing that he actually is, like, great at or better than other running backs, but the thing is he has, like, the whole arsenal compared to some people will only have – they could be great at one thing, not so good at the other list, but he has, like – he has a little bit of, like, everything. So he, his arsenal, his – uh, was it bag tool bags? There's a lot of tools in it. Yeah, and it's like I've heard him compared to like um Adrian Peterson and stuff, but he's like, like you said, he's not he doesn't have like that special. He's not like super powerful. He's not super fast. He catches everything. Um, and but the thing is, he can he can block out of the out of the backfield, which I think is great. His balance, Jason, like and his balance and his vision are is like his main, you know, and his elusive and his elusive elusive elusivity elusiveness but hey that's those are like his main uh, you know strengths but like i think that he would just be because they talk about being a generational talent and all this stuff i do not see that i watched the tape against georgia and they were literally they were really able to contain him like i can't remember how many yards they got but he got nothing big everything he had to earn and um so like i don't see the adrian peterson just type of like oh my god this guy's like an instant hall of famer but I see, um, you know, somebody that you can plug in immediately and is going to, he could lead the league in rushing if he went to the right, you know, situation. And my comp, Jason, is, should we go in that right now? Because I like, I want to talk about, because I, I remember when Ezekiel Elliott led the league in rushing his rookie year. Okay, give me, give me one second. <laughs> uh, his 2022 stats, he had 1,500 rushing yards, 18 touchdowns. He averaged 6.1 for an average. He also had 19 receptions for 314 yards. And two touchdowns. Uh, you talk about the game against Georgia. I'm going to. I'm talking about the game against Kansas State, where he rushed the ball 30 times. He took that. That's a big workload, and he ran for 209 yards and one touchdown. He also had two receptions for 34 yards. Um, and your comparison? Oh yeah. Well, it's just hard to poke holes in his game, dude. And then a lot of the tapes I saw, he's wearing his uh, jersey all tucked into his his pads. And I'm like, dude, this guy looks, I was like, I wonder what Ezekiel Elliott was like, you know, cause he was ready to roll, man. Top, top running back. He could do everything. And uh, he produced right off the bat. And I, this guy is a much better pass catcher than Ezekiel Elliott, but still dude. So I want to say he's like an Ezekiel Elliott that can catch passes, which Ezekiel, Ezekiel Elliott's an amazing top running back, top three running back in the NFL. But he, is he like, you know, an Adrian Peterson type of like, Hey dude, that's an instant hall of famer. I don't think so. Um, but still dude, like what you're drafting a running back to do, like, you couldn't ask for much more. Uh, yeah, Ezekiel Elliott, dude, so was six foot two twenty five. Bijan is five foot eleven two fifteen. So Ezekiel Elliott was a little bit heavier. And then four point four seven forty for Zeke and four point four six forty for Bijan. So I don't know. As soon as I saw that, I was like, "That's my comp right there." Because right off the bat, he he made me think of Ezekiel Elliott, and um, that's not a knock on him at all. So like, I think he's going to be an amazing running back. And he's going he's gonna to be the number one fantasy running back that you want to pick up, like Brees Hall last year. Um, but I don't think he's like instant Hall of Famer like Adrian Peterson. So, Jason, who would you say he looks and runs like? That's what we call a comparison in the biz. Well, I'll tell you what. It would be hard for me to compare anybody to Adrian Peterson. That guy in his prime, he was, he, he was something else. He got Chris started. Johnson, dude. I'm sorry. Chris Johnson was the guy giving reviews of him, like all these running backs and stuff. And he's like, I haven't seen a buddy like this since Adrian Peterson. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, dude, I don't think so, man. Yeah. Um, that's it. Uh, yeah, that's a different species. I'm actually <laughs> um, going in and when I do the comparison, and it's funny because when I actually – I like to see what my comparison was, and I look at what, like, the NFL is comparison to, and, the, and it was the same – First person I thought about when I was watching his highlights was Saquon Barkley. Um, I watched Saquon Barkley play at Penn State. You know, he had to go up against USC in the Rose Bowl that year against Sam Donald. And this guy was like returning kicks. And he was, I, I feel like he was doing the exact same things that Bijan uh, Robinson was doing, uh, catching, running. Yeah, I think he's a little bit slower because Saquon Barkley was like six foot, 233, four time. So Saquon Barkley is a little bit faster. Um, yeah, so Robinson was a little bit slower, and you know, his quads are not as big as Saquon yeah. Barkley. 
But that's my comparison of a Saquon. And Saquon, when he came out, he was one of the guys that you could you draft, and his rookie year was amazing. Yeah, he, you, uh, an immediate starter, just like you said, Jason. He doesn't need to be in a 50-50. He could just be an immediate bell cow. Like, there's, it's kind of rare. And so that's why everybody's talking yeah. to him. Jason, that's a good comparison. Yes. I, and I would say the only thing Thank that you. Saquon Barkley does is – um. That I I would give him a knock on. He's like kind of like Barry Sanders, where he just like literally is in the backfield way too long, you know, going each direction. This guy, I feel like he just gets he gets out, he gets you know up and down the field way faster than Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley could be in the backfield for like ten seconds. Okay, so I went over, and I think some some teams I need a running back. These are just some, you know. There's. Pretty, I'm pretty sure there's more, but these are the top five I thought about at the top of my head. Buccaneers, Bengals, Cowboys, Rams, and possibly the Broncos. Where do you see this guy going? Well, the way the place, the way it's going, and everybody's agreeing with this because they're like, hey, man, they just gave Jalen Hurts all this money, and they ran the ball more than anybody. They got rid of Miles Sanders. They're trying to save this, you know, let's talk about, you know, protecting your investment. So yeah, like it's, we're going to beat the dead horse right here. Dead horse is getting beat right in front of us. Uh, Eagles number 10. And guess what, dude, if that happens, I'm going to get B. John Robinson, like the second round, man. He's like a late, he goes with like late second round. Probably it's pretty crazy. I think if he goes to the Eagles, he could possibly be a first round. I mean, I might get him late first round. That's what I mean. That's the kind of that's what we're talking about, man. Which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Like, uh, so we're talking about going him to go into a perfect situation. He will go to a perfect situation, and if he doesn't go there, everybody wants the Cowboys to draft him. Everybody's looking for the Cowboys to either you know trade up and draft uh, Michael Mayer or this dude. So Bijan Robinson. Yeah, I also heard that there's a chance that Bijan might be a Seahawk. But yeah, and that would be that would be a well. Kenneth Walker has they but they both have great vision. I would say Kenneth Walker has even better vision. Um, but that'd be tough, man. I wouldn't that wouldn't guarantee so much success. Yeah. All right, so we're going to number two. All right, Jason. Number two is my buddy Gibbs. Mr. Gibbs. Gibbs, Gibbs oh, Ribs. Joe Gibbs, huh? I don't Gibbs a what? I don't Gibbs a what? Oh, <laughs> give me the give me the Gibbs. Or was that baby back Gibbs? I got my Jimmy or my Jimmy or my Jimmy or Gibbs. I got my Jimmy or Jimmy or Jimmy or Jimmy or Gibbs. Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. Back Gibbs. Running, running back Gibbs. <laughs> Damn. Bro. Okay. I see you. I see you over there. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Number two. Um, This this guy was, he was pretty fun. He was pretty fun to watch Tyler. Dude. And Yeah. It was a, uh, when I was watching his highlights, first thing I noticed, first first handoff, I was like, this boy looks fast. He looks fast. Um, another thing is, like, he caught the ball, and when he caught it, he had a lot of yards after catch. So he was catching it and running. Boom, gone. Um, he's another person. His cutback, he's like, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> he's going to stop it. You couldn't stop it. He's just, like, so fast. He's, like, cutting it now. Inside, backside. Um. I put his route running. He had very good route running skills for a running back. Um, he And the last thing I want to put is, like, he was slippery. I felt like people, like, I, maybe because he was just so fast and, like, his cutbacks, uh, even when people were, like, putting their hands on him, he was gone. He was gone. And it was, he seemed like he was just, like, goo, like, slime, like, uh, what's that? Ghostbusters, slime, slummer. The, uh, oh, slimer, but I thought you were going to say, what was, I forget what, ecto, ectoplasm. <laughs> And he was just oozing off of him. Uh, yeah, I think I think he's going to be a pretty good – he's another one that's going to be a pretty good running back. Um, his measurements at the NFL Combine, Tyler, he was 5'9", 199 pounds, uh, but his 40 time was 4.36, and his 10-yard split was 1.52. Yeah, he's short, but he's thick. You know I mean? 5'9 is tiny for weighing 200 pounds. Uh, we say that about uh, Bryce, Bryce Young, but – He's mostly water weight. This dude's like pure muscle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, dude, when you said slippery, like the first thing I, I knew who my comp was on the first play. It, I, he was the easiest comp for me. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but this fool, like he churns his legs. Like he is hard to get down and it is hard to keep him down, man. Like 
you think you got him down and no like he puts his hand he's like three point stance it's freaking crazy uh but he turns my his legs like a future hall of famer like leads the nfl in running attempts probably um but yeah dude he is the best receiver on alabama so he was bryce young's best receiver i mean you watch those it's like i watched uh i think i watched that game it was alabama versus georgia or whatever and it's like dude i was like i was all trying to see which wide receivers bryce young likes he likes his running back dude he like gibbs so i would have gibbs over bajan robinson because i gibbs is like he's like actually special at a couple things, you know, but the problem with him is he's small. So, uh, is he going to be in every down back in the NFL? Like maybe if he, I don't know, probably not. Um, so I don't know. That's the issue is size. Like, can he like start immediately and pass block? I'm not really sure, but he did play for Alabama. So he saw the best, you know, he saw the best pass rushers. It's just, um, he just doesn't have the size to compete with like B. John Robinson in a lot of those areas. Yeah. When I was watching his highlights, Tyler, I swear it was like three minutes straight of just clips of him catching the ball in the backfield. Dude, <laughs> I was like, oh my down God. the field in the end zone. I was just like, okay, so he, this guy can catch the ball. He can run those routes. So, and that's good. That's something in fantasy football too. It's like, if you could get a running back who obviously could get, um, you know what today's world, 10 to 15 carries, but also he's per- He's producing like seven, five, seven, ten catches a game. Like ETN almost, you know, like ETN, you know, ETN smaller. They didn't know if he could even handle the load, stuff like that. He's not my comp. But uh, yeah, Jason, so I freaking love Gibbs, dude. I thought Gibbs was the biz, the bee's knees. If he wasn't so small, I'd have him over Bijan. I'd be like, what are you guys talking about, dude? Yeah. He might not be able to be a third down back, but we'll see. I think people probably thought that about other players who – able to do it but his 2022 stats tyler he had 926 rushing yards seven rushing touchdowns he averaged 6.1 average a carry but he also had 44 receptions on 444 yards and three touchdowns um the game i have here the stats was against lsu he was 15 rushes for 99 yards this is like what i'm saying if you get like a running back that could do around 10 to 15 rushes a game and then he had an additional eight catches for 64 yards. I was like, that right there, you know, put in a touchdown in. Let's put a touchdown in there. I will love that as my running back on my fantasy football team. Yeah, all right, Jason, you want to um, get into the comps? Yeah, do you want me to go first? Yeah, who do you think he uh, – No, 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 no. <laughs> I, you're excited. You're excited for yours. So I'll let you go first. So first play, I was like, oh, my God, dude, this guy's turning his legs no matter what. Like, and he's like, there's a pile. He pops out on the other side, just turning. And I was like, that's Frank Gore right there. The more I watched Frank Gore, Frank Gore, Frank Gore. I was like, oh, my God, dude, Frank Gore, five foot nine, same height. But he's got 15 more pounds of like iron steel. Like uh, what's that stuff that they harvest in Black Panther? Vibranium, dude. Like Frank Gore is like as an outer shell of vibranium, you know, that weighs 15 more pounds uh because he could pass block and he was like you know unbreakable whereas this guy i i see a he's like a faster frank gore because frank gore ran a 4.5840 40 that's pretty slow and you said jason this guy ran a 435 pretty much so i'm seeing a frank gore like a faster frank gore who might not be able to be as tough or pass block like frank gore but dude same running style just faster that's a good comparison uh, thanks thanks jason thanks 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 prison, prison tyler says thanks uh one of the so this was a comparison that i heard a lot like people were comparing him to alvin Kamara, and i could see it i could see the comparison but the one thing with alvin Kamara, uh he just his, his style of play like he doesn't even look like he's playing he doesn't look, look like, like he cares you know yeah, this guy like, look like I'm, oh, you cannot this guy cares too much Yes, Gibbs was just like, you could tell, he's like, give me that ball. I'm going to sprint like Forrest Gump until someone tells me to stop. I'm going to keep going. Um, Because of like the running style and there's actually two players and it's like, okay. Go for it. So because of, he's able to catch the ball out of the backfield and because of the, of the running style, I compared him to Aaron Jones from the Green Bay Packers. Um, 5'9". Think- you know, 208 pounds, Aaron Rodgers or Aaron Jones ran a 4.56 and his 10 yard split was 1.53. Um, 
The other comparison, I don't have the stats for, but I kept watching him more. I was like, dude, this guy kind of reminds me of like Jamal Charles. Because Jamal Charles used to do that exact thing. He would used to just kind of run outside and then just take one step and cut it and just run it and book it. And you weren't catching that guy. Jamal Charles was a beast when it came to like his speed and just like his mobility. Like he was great. And I was seeing that a lot with Gibbs too. I really liked Aaron Jones or you said Aaron Jones, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good one. Like he's like a more explosive Aaron Jones, really. Because Aaron Jones was a low draft pick. I don't know. Not he wasn't first or second round, I'm pretty sure. He was like fourth round. Yeah, they uh what's the big guy that Dylan, AJ Dylan, that's not nearly as good as Jones was a high draft pick. So I really like that, Jason. That was a good one. Thanks. So next up, people, we are going to my dad's favorite basketball team, U C L A Bruins. For Zach, he's got a nice glass of Chardonnay. Mm-hmm. He's going to probably pop that when he gets, oh, 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 too soon, Tyler. Where's Gibbs going? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's all right. I forgot, too. Where Red do I have this? Let me, let me look. Oh, yeah. That's right. You should be, this should make you happy, Jason. Cowboys, 21. No, 26. 26. So, like, I wish the Vikings would pick him up and just cut Dalvin Cook, but that's not going to happen. So, uh, I don't think the tight end that the Cowboys want is going to be there. So, they're going to go looking for running back because the running back is really deep. And there's, like, I think that this is kind of like the end of a tier. Like, I think the top two are just amazing. So, uh, yeah, Cowboys. How do you feel about that? I don't know. I don't know if I like that pick. (laughs) I feel like – you know, there, there's a lot of rumors that Cowboys are trying to maybe going after a running back, but I don't know. I, I feel like I would kind of just want a bigger back to kind of use more around the goal line and I have to, like, rely on Pollard so much. But I also, uh, if he went to the Cowboys, I it's it's going to be it's going to be pretty scary with they already got Tony Pollard there and then having Gibbs for, you know, fantasy reasons. Yeah, it's not ideal. So, like, Ideal would be uh, the Chargers, and then they just don't, pay, and then they don't pay Eckler. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh my God, dude! If I was the Chargers, I'd think hard about that because I don't want to. I mean, as much as I, hey, Austin Eckler, hope you're a fan of the show. I would pay you. <laughs> uh, my salary cap is like a hundred bucks. You get, I'll give you fifty percent of that. Right, and Apex <laughs> coins. <laughs> so, anyways, Jason, next up, dude, we got our fine glass. Of Char- his name was so long it didn't even fit, so I had to add the T at the end. Wait till you get my comparison on this one, dude. Champagne up in the something. First class. So. No coitus in the champagne room. No ah. coitus in the champagne room. Oh, man, my stuff, my background got blurry, but my face is still crystal clear, so eat it. Crystal clear. Um, okay. okay, so this is your number third guy. I really like this guy, Tyler. I really do. I think you're going to enjoy the comparison that I have for him. So this guy is uh, from UCLA. The one thing I saw about him that I really like that he runs the inside. He runs inside, and he had his stutter steps. Like he had this one guy, um, but he looked like he made the defender like he was drunk because he was trying to fall. And he was like, and he was just like, bam, 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 bam. It was amazing. Um, I he. I like his balance. There was a lot of times like he would get knocked or get hit, but he was able to keep his balance and keep on going. Um, one thing too is like you didn't catch this guy like running out of the end zone or running out of the sideline, Tyler. He was like looking for contact to finish those plays. He kept fighting. He had like his runs. I feel like they just they looked good. They looked like they were just like pretty finessed runs when he would uh, break off something long. And I also liked how patient he was when he's waiting for the blockers to go into the blocking. And so he could break free and, you know, do all this, do all this balance or looking for contact and stutter steps. I, I really, I really like this guy. Um, his measurements was uh, six feet, 214 pounds. His 40 time was, po- his 40, <laughs> his 40 time was 4.53. His 10 yard <laughs> split was 1.54. I really got you, Jason. You thought that, I'd like <laughs> more about your reaction. Chabonet. So when I saw this guy, I was like, dude, this guy is so slow. Like, what is this guy's problem? And then, like, once he gets past the first level, it is insane, dude. Like, 
I, w- I thought he was going to run like a four three, and then I was like, oh, dude, a four five. But then it kind of started making. I think he's a slow starter. That's his problem. His acceleration kind of sucks. Yeah, one point five four. He's a long strider. It's like Eric Dickerson out there. Once he gets going, it's freaking crazy. Like, and he is large, dude. So, like you said, six foot two fourteen. But he looks bigger. Like his lower half is bigger. And you watch him run block and stuff. Like he can bully some people out there. So like he's got all the size of Bijan Robinson. Maybe even a little bit more, even though it's not really saying that. And uh, you know he's going to be a much better like ready to go. Like he's he's you know Bijan Robinson is an immediate bell cow, and so is Zach Charbonnet. Get him in the right running style, like the one cut. You know, like um, the Shanahan stuff. Oh my god, I. It's like Raheem Moster, you know, just like all of a sudden you see this dude going a million miles an hour on the other side of the line. Yeah. But my big knock on him, though, Jason, was like he can – I'm going to have to see how he does against, like, better competition and stuff because he really is a slow starter, man. Like his feet take a, a minute to start churning. Because mm-hmm. like I said, I thought when you watch him, you think he's so fast. And then it's like you see the 40 and you're like – and you start really watching him in the beginning and it's like, I don't know, dude. Um. I think he's just trying to make his reads. And once he has his read, he hits it. So give him the right, you know, offense where he doesn't have to like think so much. And I think he could be like a superstar. So my uh, 2022 stats I got from him is uh, 1,359 yards, 14 touchdowns. Uh, He averaged seven yards a carry. And he also had 37 receptions for 321 yards. So he could catch the ball. Um, The game that I have here is that it was against Stanford. And he had 21 carries. He had 198 yards. And he had three touchdowns. He had 9.4 yards per carry. And he also had five receptions for 61 yards. No touchdowns, but average 12.2 yards per reception. Trip tore it. Tore that up. Everybody, yeah, and everybody we've talked about, and I think everybody we're going to talk about today can catch the ball. So this is kind of like a new thing. It's not like these running backs can't catch the ball anymore. It's kind of crazy. And all these dudes... I mean, Charbonnet is not as good as the first two, but, I mean, the first two look like they could be wide receivers as well. Mm-hmm. So, Jason, who do you think he looks like? Who does he remind the lucky bastard of? I hope you like this, Tyler. I really hope you like it. Arian Foster. Dude, I actually heard that. That's funny. Oh, nice. Um, Arian Foster, he was 6'1", 215 pounds. Um, I couldn't find a 40 time on him, but just it wasn't anything show, impressive. It wasn't. Yeah. Well, I mean, there you go. That helps with Charbonnet's case because his running 40 isn't um, impressive either, but it was just like, I remember when I used to watch Aaron Foster, uh, just tear up fantasy leagues. Like I didn't really see him just like, you know, running out straight line, 60 yard touchdowns. This guy was like weaving through traffic, right? He has that one of those famous, uh, runs that he went this way. And then he ran all the way back and scored a touchdown. But he was able to make people miss with his stutter step. Like, he was his cutbacks. He was just like, boom, they're gone, you're gone, you're gone, and just run it in. And he could also catch the ball. He was very impressive in PPR. He was a, a good catching quarterback. R.I.P. Darian Foster, not that he's dead, but, like, his uh, his life and fantasy football ended way too early. But, yeah, Mike Barrison was Aaron Foster. Also, Jason, guess who uh, Arian Foster, what kind of scheme that was? That was a Gary Kubiak, Shanahan blocking system. So there you go. Like you get a running back in there. Like Arian Foster is like a borderline Hall of Famer. He's a fantasy Hall of Famer. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Jason. Mine is you should know this guy well, Jason. I almost said Ryan Matthews because like he had the white gloves a lot (laughs) and uh, the powder blues, you know, but. My brain took over. DeMarco Murray, dude. Remember DeMarco Murray, Jason? Yeah. DeMarco Murray. Yeah, but the thing is is that DeMarco Murray had great acceleration and not quite the top speed. So, like, the way they run, though, like, I don't know, man. When I watch them, the way they cut in and out, the way they just come out of the backfield, everything like that. Um, The only thing is is that that DeMarco Murray gets to his top end speed, but it is no match to compare to uh, Charbonnet's top end speed. But yeah, dude, six six foot two. I don't even know what I just wrote, dude. I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> six foot. Oh yeah, six foot even two thirteen. Zach Charbonnet is six foot even two fourteen. Yeah. So Demarco Murray four point three seven. Like I said, he's got that acceleration, dude. Uh, but four point five three. 
And the funny thing is I, I was cruising on the um, comments of the highlights. And after I already thought DeMarco Murray, I saw like eight DeMarco Murrays. Oh my God, I see it too. Blah, 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 blah. So I don't know how that makes you feel. Well, I like DeMarco Murray. He had that great season with the Cowboys um, back in the, what was it? The, uh, the tripod 2.0. Um, he would, he was really only, what would you say? I think he was really only good when he played for the Cowboys. When he went to the Eagles afterward, I don't think he really produced as much, but so he had that great offensive line, but I could definitely see it. I think this guy definitely has the power that DeMarco Murray had too. Yeah. I, I just, it just kind of stands out to me. Like, I don't know what he does with his hands. I don't, it was just kind of weird, man. Like, it's just funny. The way people run just remind me of the way other people run. It's yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the running style, bro. That's the running style. Like, this guy runs like, like this guy. Yeah, so uh, I thought that was a good one because DeMarco Murray is an amazing running back, and it's like, ah, whatever. I mean, if Charbonnet was running a 4.3, you'd see him up there with um, Robinson and such. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, Jason, I only did the first uh, – I only – uh, mock draft the first round and i do not have him going in the first round i think he's going to be a top of second round player and i could see houston maybe drafting another running back because they have pierce but like mm-hmm. you know so san francisco this guy's coming from san francisco he they just want running backs give them the running backs yeah and i could see the cardinals drafting him as well because you know john john, uh, john connor james connor was just a temporary solution and he worked out but he's getting old, man. So, like, I could see that both happening. Um, and it's like, then you'd have to keep on going down, dude. Like, there's a lot of teams already have running backs. So, the Bears might pick him up. And that's the only other position. But the Bears, I don't know, dude. It's just kind of hard to say. Uh, You know, one of the first comparisons I actually really thought with this guy, with the very first, like, just, you know, when you see a run, you're like, oh, that guy reminds me of Nick Chubb. And if there's any case the scenario that he's like following Nick Chubb's footsteps like Nick Chubb like went to the Browns right and he wasn't with a starter off off the bat I think he had he was behind another player and then he like worked it in and then he's been great there's a good chance that like with those teams he just said you know playing for the uh Texans or the Cardinals like James Conner that there's a chance that that could happen too yeah I agree sorry so I I gotta pin this down dude all right, well, I think we're we're going to take a little break. Yeah, we only have six minutes left. And we're gonna, so we only have two more running backs after this. And they're going to go a little bit faster. And then we're getting to the wide receivers. So stick with us, people. Please, please, please stick with us. Ah, see ya soon. Okay. Okay. Next up, we're going to talk about 2 Chain's cousin, a chain. He's got one chain. What do you call one chain? A chain. What? Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> we already went over the top three running backs. Getting into the fourth one right now. Like I said, you could just draft nothing but fantasy, you know, rookie running backs on your fantasy team, and you'll probably be doing just fine. That's the way it's kind of worked out the last couple of years. And I don't see it. This is a very strong class, so it's probably going to continue. Anyways, Jason. Devon, I don't know if it's Devin or Devon. I'm gonna go off of that, you know, key and peel and just call him Devon. Devon, yeah. A chain <laughs> substitute teacher, man. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about him? Give me uh, a description. Devon A chain from Texas A and M. Uh, the first thing I noticed about him is like in his first couple of highlights, like this dude's got some crazy balance. There were some plays where he got hit, and then he was like crawling on the grass but he is needed in touch and he just got back up and booked it um of course this guy looked fast he was like a blur on the tv screen when i was watching him i was like am i in 4k or am i in 720 uh, <laughs> i was in 4k uh he has a ridiculous like first two steps like he gets the ball and he's all and it's like one two bam one two bam he was gone he was gone, Tyler. I couldn't even see this guy. He did his first two steps, and he was gone. He was already in the second level. It was just like – it was amazing. There was a few times where he would get the ball in the, in the backfield, and there was already a guy there, and he took one step, and he just – bam. He dodged a defender, Tyler, in the backfield. He dodged him so bad, the defender went and hit the quarterback by mistake. <laughs> it was crazy. 
um his stop and go was insane like he would just he would run run as fast as he can doing 100 miles per hour he will stop let the defender go right by him and then he's like back at it 100 miles per hour um and then it kind of goes where like when he was breaking off those runs those 60 yard runs you did not see this guy slowing down it's like he kept the same mile per hour he did not lose speed at all he's like once he got to that top speed he kept it and it was not going down unless you took it took out his knees um that was my main takeaways from him his uh measurements at the nfl combine he was 5'8 188 his 40 time though was 4.32 and his 10 yard split was 1.51 yeah and so jason I, i'm glad that you brought up the you know his ability to stop and go i'm not really sure if that's balance you know or whatever but yeah his uh biggest attributes are balance you know and uh vision and acceleration so he can like stop and then just take off again. He sees what's coming and like, dude, it just reminds me so much of a hall of fame player that I have to listen to all the damn time. But I also got my, uh, my height was five, nine, Jason. I'm giving him five, nine. Okay. For comparison reasons, purposes. So yeah, I agreed with, I mean, everything you just said. And as far as, you know, if you're going to knock him for anything, it's, he probably is too small to be a bell cow, you know, like, you know, pass blocking and stuff like that. But if you put him in the right situation, he might not have to do any of that stuff and he could be a bell cow. And then he could turn into a light version of what I'm going to compare him to. But Jason, who do you think he looks like? Well, before going to that, just let me do these. His 2022 stats, he had 1,102 yards rushing, eight touchdowns, 5.6 yards per carry, but he also caught the ball. There is a trend there here, Tyler, like you've been, like you said, um, 36 times for 196 yards and three touchdowns. He averaged 5.4 yards per carry. The game that I watched where he just absolutely killed it was against Old Miss. And he kind of did a bell cow here. 25 rushes for 138 yards, zero touchdowns, but also seven receptions for 41 yards and one touchdown. Um, I agree with you, Tyler. I don't think he's going to be a bell cow in the NFL at this time. And but there's my comparison wasn't a bell cow either. And I was it. And I'm sticking to the five, eight. Cause that kind of helps me out a little bit. I know that's why I was thinking to five, nine. Yeah. Cause it helps me out a little bit, but <laughs> there was a certain player. So when I see this guy and I'm like, dude, this guy kind of makes me want to go out and buy Madden when he's in the NFL. I would love to play beyond Madden and play this character and play as this uh, digital player. There was another player like that back in the day. I think when he, uh, when he played for the Chargers, Darren Sproles. This guy reminded me a lot of Darren Sproles of how he would weave his way out of traffic. And Darren Sproles, like, he was a short little dude, but that guy was quick. And, like, I feel like he never got tired. And he was just – he had one speed, and that was 100 miles per hour, like, every time. Um, Darren Sproles, he's 5'6", but um, 187 pounds. This is at his NFL combine. Um, he ran the 40. Believe it or not, 4.49. I thought he was quicker than that. but And his 10-yard split was 1.56. Yeah, he was all acceleration, you know. He didn't have much top-end speed because his legs were, you know, tiny. So small. But, hey, I mean, it worked out for him. Jason, I really like that comparison. Um, and if you know anything about fantasy football, if you've been playing long enough, Darren Sproles was a very valuable, you know, fantasy running back. Uh, whenever he And he could carry the load if they needed him to. So, yeah. especially in the younger a, days, uh, Darren Sproles had to do that a few times. What do you got for a comparison? Well, when you we're talking about that stopping and just letting defenders go and then running, like there's a famous videos on you know NFL doc. If I, if you watch NFL Network, you know what I'm talking about Marshall Falk, dude. Oh, okay. So Marshall Falk was five ten two twelve. He was actually big, and he ran a four point three five. So Marshall Falk, this is like dude. Marshall Falk was a bell cow, you know, for Peyton Manning. And he was big enough to, he was just on the borderline to be big enough to do that. But he had the speed of this dude as well. That's why he's like an all time great. So I'm not saying that this A, a chain is a, a, you know, that's the closest thing I can kind of find to him. He's like a smaller Marshall Far Fall, Marshall Falk, just because of the way, dude, like that stop and go stuff and his vision and his speed. It just like, I, and his bounce, you know, like you think he's going down, he does a, puts his hand, just crazy stuff. Crawling he on the ground. All of his limbs. Yeah. 
Um, if he had a big nose, dude, that would be a whole. He'd, he'd use that too. Uh, <laughs> big comparison. Yeah, yeah. So I like Marshall Falk for the comparison, uh, even though I do not think he's going to have nearly the career that Marshall Falk had. People said the same thing about Marshall Falk. Yeah, I know, but man, it kind of blew me away that Marshall Falk was five ten two. You know, five foot ten, two hundred twelve pounds. Like I don't think of him being like. Yeah. I always thought he was pretty big, but not like buff. You know, he was. I just thought he was kind of solid. And he was a bell cow for two teams, for the Colts and the Rams. There, oh, yeah. There you go, dude. Um, so, uh, where, where's this guy going? Where's this kid going? Like I said, I think he's going to go sometime in the um, second round. I think the rest of our players are probably going to go in the second round. And I think that he's going to go – like I said, I think that the uh, Charbonnet could go to the Cardinals, but James Conner, we haven't heard anything about James Conner not being under contract or anything like that. I think this guy would be amazing – you know, protecting Kyler Murray. They've got two small dudes back there. Which small dude are you going to deal with? Can't even see him. And then, uh, <laughs> and spelling James Connor. So I think that would be like, if you can get this guy at the top of the second round. Uh, even though like who they just who's their new coach, Jason? Their new coach is the, uh, it's the defensive coordinator for the, the Eagles. The Eagles. So that's kind of scary. You kind of want to. You you might wonder if they're just going to go heavy defense because of that. But if I was the Cardinals, man, I would love to pick this dude up. Because they needed they needed help last year, and uh, they got you know I think it was like Darnell, um, the dude from the Chiefs that did well in the playoffs always Darnell Williams or whatever his name was. Oh yeah, yeah, the running back. Yeah, so if they could just get that's a huge upgrade from that, and you can and James Conner was not healthy last year a lot, so keep both of them healthy, man, and have a good you know lightning and thunder. Um, I am. Oh, what's wrong, Jason? Jonathan Gannon. Oh my God, that's their head coach from the Eagles. Oh, so yeah, I was just thinking, like, is he an offensive coach or a defensive coach? And I knew he was new. I always get the the ones I knew that they lost. Eagles lost both their coordinators. I just can't remember where they went. Yeah, and uh, a chain. If he went to the Cardinals, he would be like a Chase Edwards, two point oh, two point five. Chase. Who's Chase Edmonds? Edmonds. You say I think Edmonds. he's a NASCAR driver. I think Chase what? Edmonds is a NASCAR driver. Yeah, Chase Edmonds. He'd be like a 2.5 Chase Edmonds out of that backfield. And then Jason, um, I, I only did – all I have is one more left. Yep. Which one did you do? I did – well, actually, I did two. I did um, – Because I've got Spears right here. Okay, not Spears. Tank Bigsby. All right, let's just do Tank Bigsby then, because uh, I needed. I, I forgot to. Ta- I was doing some stuff, and I, for- I don't have any Tank Bigsby stuff, but all I have is Spear stuff. <laughs> Dang man, you told me. Okay, this will be pretty quick because I think there's a reason why he's projected to go a little bit later. Um, Tank Bigsby from Auburn. He had very good, very good vision. He had great cutback skills. There's. There's seriously a highlight where you see him do it like four times. Like he was on the right side of the field and he did so many cutbacks and had defenders go by him. He ended up on the left side of the field. Um, and he's a, he's a decent catcher. And the one thing I do like about it is that he runs, he runs inside the line. He runs outside of the line. Not a lot going on. I think he can still be a pretty good quarterback. He's got an NFL frame, which I like because he's six foot two ten. His 40 though was 4.56 and his 10 yard split was 1.54. Who does he remind you of, Jason? Um, well, his stats in 2022 were not awesome. He he only ran the ball 179 times. No, nah, I don't think that's right. <laughs> but he had uh, well, maybe it was right. Well, that's pretty good. 179 times, uh, nine 970 yards and 10 touchdowns. He also caught the ball 30 times for 180 yards against Texas A&M. He had 23 carries, 121 yards, and two catches for 20. My comparison is just because of how this guy looks. I, there was two, and the one that I'm doing right now, I kind of wish I went to the other one. But the way he looks and the way he runs. Um, also, this guy, it was crazy. I think Auburn might have one of the best offensive lines in college football because when this guy broke through the line, he was seriously not getting touched. It was crazy. Like, there were nobody would touch him. Like, his long breakthrough, breakout runs, like, nobody was touching this guy. He was just, like, able just – do it perfectly and that's part of the reason why i said his vision was great but um frank gore is it really 
I had a Frank Gore, yeah. Part of the reason why is because Frank the Tank Gore. And this I was just going to say, dude, like, I, he's got a great name. Just like Frank Gore, Tank Bigsby. I, I, just that alone, you got me sold. Yeah, um, wasn't too – there was a, a lot of – people weren't so high on Frank Gore when he was coming out. But Frank Gore, when he was – after um, – or when he was playing for the San Francisco 49ers, I saw a lot of similar runs where Frank Gore was not even getting touched, and he was just like, oh, my gosh. It was – I. So it was either him. I put down Frank Gore. You're right, Tyler. Frank Gore was like, what, 5'9", 217. He was like a boulder. But the frame that I see with, like, Dalvin is Dalvin Cook. I saw a Dalvin Cook type runner when I was watching this guy, like, his frame. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I think he I, – I don't know. From what I read, it's like, yeah. I mean, it seems like there's a tear drop off after um, – who was the last person we talked about? Oh, A-Chain. Yeah, you know everybody's like super special. Now this guy's just like you know he's he could be a starter in the NFL. Um, but we think this a lot, dude. Just like the guy, I mean, like you know, like a Tony Pollard or somebody that you know is just kind of falls to second, third round. He's like whatever. Alfred Morris, he could be, he could still be great. Um, and he's got the size to be you know, a bell cow. So that's 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 something to think about. And then uh, I I did a uh, high J Spears. Uh, he's 5'10", 201. I compared him to Tony Pollard. Yeah, they both ran like a 4 five forty, And they both, like, it's not like they jump out of the tape. It's like Tony Pollard jumps off, like, now. Oh, I like, saw Spears from, like, two, two on. Yeah, two, yeah. yeah. He, they played against USC last year. I, I saw that guy. Oh, I saw him. Part of the so, reason like, he gave me a heart attack. Yeah, so, like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to spend much time on it, and I'm going to dive. We're going to go super deep into running backs. Uh, you know, in like a month or two before everything, and we'll include all of our rookie running backs. So we'll get into that. Did you have a comparison for him? Yeah, Tony Pollard, dude. Oh, Tony Pollard. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's like pretty good. when I was when I was watching, I was like this guy doesn't look like he's like like he's doing great, but it doesn't look like he's doing great. Like he's <laughs> I don't know what to think about this guy. And uh, and the more I watched him run, I just like I felt like I haven't watched Tony Pollard in so long, but for some reason that just like jumped out to me, like the running style and stuff. Yeah, I think he's. A little bit small for a running back too. Yeah, he is five ten. I mean five ten two oh one. I mean Okay, I thought he was small. five ten two hundred pounds. It's not bad. He looks he doesn't look thick on the screen. All right. All right. That is our running backs, people. Now we're gonna get into our wide receivers. There we go. Yeah, and I wanna give away Jason, do you think I'm do you think I'm too crazy or should I be how crazy should I be right now? Dude, this is the fantasy footballing show. My number one wide receiver. Here we go. Here we go. <gasps> I'm nervous. Zay Flowers. All right. I thought you were going to say Zay Jones, but Zay Flowers. I really went in. I really went in wanting to make a in Jigba or whatever. My number one. Uh, wide receiver but uh yeah dude watching the tape and then listen to steve smith and some other wide receivers you know discuss the wide receivers coming out dude zay flowers is insane like as far as so like last season chris olave was all about separation this guy is the number one separator in this class and i will not talk about this jason because i you look excited and you're just oh happy. i just can't wait till you i i had to change my comparison with him and i can't wait to here, my first comparison with him. So, uh, before I start gushing about Zay Flowers, this is like me and Hen and Hooker. I'm like, oh man, everybody wants this guy, but you should look at this guy. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you feel about Zay Flowers, or what do you think about him? I like Zay Flowers. Uh, from Boston College, um, when he's on the screen, the dude looks fast. He looks fast when he's running his routes. He's got good hands. This guy is a playmaker. He's the type of guy that you want to get the ball in his hands and let him do something with it. I would see that a lot. It would just be like a drag route. It's like, just give it to him and let him do something. He would turn a drag route into like a 40-yard touchdown. And he's also a deep threat. I like that, too. So he's doing these drag routes, and he's also a deep threat. He's got this because of, because of the speed. And just because of Troy Aikman, I put, he can make every catch. <laughs> he could do over the shoulder. He could do the one-handed. He could do the sideline tippy-toe. He can make every catch. I really like Zay Flowers, too. His measurements, I wish he was a little bit taller. I wish he was a baller. 
Um, he's 5'9", 182 pounds. Uh, he ran his four. His forty was four point four two. His ten yard dash. Actually, I don't know what. I think I messed up on that. Oh, one point five three for his ten yard split, and but his vertical Tyler for that size is thirty five point five inches. Well, he's very explosive. Like, so yeah, like I said number one separator. Chris Olave was that last year, and you saw how that went. So, like, he's very good at separating, even though he doesn't have burner speed. You know, like, none of these wide receivers are in the four threes, which I thought was interesting. He is very smooth. Like, it's like you almost you don't know what he's doing type of stuff, and his route running is an amazing route runner. And the biggest attribute that he has, Jason, is that he makes the quarterback right. Say the quarterback messes up, he makes the quarterback look good. And Steve Smith said that's the rarest trait. That's the best, rarest trait. Coming out of college, like if you have that, you're going to be like a Hall of Famer, pretty much. Ooh. And so, like, and he showed clips of it, man, and he was right. He was right. So, I like that attribute. Yeah, like his balls are in the air, like under th- he, and he can adjust to the ball so much. And you think the quarterback did the right thing, and he actually did something wrong, and he made the quarterback right. So, Jason, who does he remind you of? Um. Well, going into that. His stats for 2022, 78 receptions, 1,077, 1,077 yards, 12 touchdowns. He averaged 13.8 yards per catch. The game I have him against is Syracuse, where he had eight receptions, 110 yards, and two touchdowns. The comparison, I'll tell you the one that I have written down on paper, then I'll tell you the one that I thought about, um, was T.Y. Hilton. There was a lot of like down the field action that I saw, plus, you know, just the drag route. I saw a lot of T.Y. Hilton going deep and saw a lot of T.Y. Hilton getting drag routes, catching it, using his speed to turn the corner. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, 5'10, 183 pounds. But the first person, Tyler, that I thought when I was watching this guy, it's like, I had, I can't do this. I can't do this to myself. This is, this is stupid. I'm dumb, dumb, dumb. I might have done it. Do it. Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown, five foot ten, one eighty five. Zay Flowers, five foot nine, one eighty two. Antonio Brown, four point four seven forty. Zay Flowers, four point four two forty. This is a better Antonio Brown, Jason. Oh man, this guy's better than Antonio Brown. Put a gold jacket on him, Jason. <laughs> no, nah, like man, I'm telling you, dude. Like the way, the way that he adjust, like the deep ball stuff for being a small receiver. And the smooth operation, like Antonio Brown, by all accounts, was the hardest working freaking player in the NFL for like 10 years. Like he was a psycho. Mm-hmm. Is this guy going to have the same drive? I don't know. But man, he looks a lot like Antonio Brown on the on the tape. That's what like I was like, dude, if I'm comparing him to Antonio Brown, how am I? I can't not and compare him to Antonio Brown and not make him my number one wide receiver. Right. Very true. Very true. That's a good point. That was the driving force behind my number one wide receiver. And then Steve Smith has a, just a way of talking me into things. I like Steve Smith. I know he's hilarious. I up, baby. I <laughs> Um. Okay, Tyler, going over some of the teams that may need a wide receiver. I got four here, and either it could be the Giants, the Parker, or the Parkers, the Packers, the Texans, or the Chiefs. Where do you think this guy might be going? I've heard rumors, but where do you so, think he's going? I've heard too much. If it wasn't for the Jordan Addison to um, the Vikings, I would say Zay Flower, Flowers Vikings all day long. Like, this is what they need, dude. Um, they've got just a long, tall Justin Jefferson. Let's get this little dude in here just to, like, wreak havoc on the other side of the field. Um, but I just keep on hearing so much about Jordan Addison, Jordan Addison, and, like, I guess, they, you know, KJ right on the other side of the field, put him, put Addison in the slot. So I have to move him down to the next team. And that's the Giants. I think the Giants are going to go wide receiver. They have, they got Wondell Robinson um, last year. And, you know, this is kind of like maybe they see Stephon Diggs or something in this guy. Um, so, yeah, I would say because, you know, Brian Dayball coming from st- coaching Stephon Diggs. So I would say that uh, the Giants have a good cha- chance of drafting him. That would be my number one pick probably. Is this uh, in the first round? Yeah, in the first round. Okay. So he'd be gone at the 25th pick. Correcto mundo, Jason. Okay. Who's uh what do you got for number two? Number two, 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 two. Jackson Smith in Jigba. The guy that says he's Jigba with it. He's <laughs> he's better than uh 
his fellow wide receivers, and he's going to tear it up in the NFL. Um, he's from Ohio State, Jackson. Uh, straight off the tape, you can see, right? He has great route running. His route running is good. And I'm all about that route, route running. I feel like you could be the slowest dude out there, but if you could run the best uh, routes, you're gonna be you're gonna make it in the NFL, and he was he was great at those already in college. He had great con- concentration for this guy's size. He was even playing the middle. I like seeing wide receivers go in the middle, knowing that you're probably gonna get hit. But you go you go in there anyway. He's elusive. Once he hits the ball, he gets the ball, and he was elusive. 90, 99 Madden stat. And Tyler, uh, I'm gonna say it again. He makes all the catches. He made all the catches. Um. And he's another one. He's another playmaker. Like, just put the ball in this guy's hands and let him do something with it, right? You need some, you need a big play. Let's let's work up a, a play where we're going to put the ball in this guy's hands, guaranteed, and you're going to get yourself something. It's going. It's either going to be like a you know sixty yard touchdown, or it's going to be the most beautiful three yards you've ever seen in your life. His measurements at the NFL Combine, Tyler. He's a six one, one hundred ninety six pounds, and his vertical was thirty five inches. Yeah, and so. He is oversized. He's pretty much just a slot receiver. I mean, really. And the big news is, hey, dude, he was like he was on the same team as, uh, you know, Chris Olave and the guy from the Jets. I can't think of right now. Garrett Wilson. Was, Garrett Wilson and both those. And they all said that this guy in Jigba was the number one wide receiver. He was the best one out of all of them. And the last time I heard something like that was the Jamar Chase stuff. When Jamar Chase was with Justin Jefferson and all this, like. Everybody's like, dude, you haven't seen anything. Like, because Jamar Chase got injured. It's like, dude, Jamar Chase is the best wide receiver. I do not think he's anything close to Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is on a whole other stratosphere. But this guy, two main skills, Jason, body control and route running. And and then ball skills right under that. But like, dude, his there is like so much, so much his body control is ridiculous. So he's big in the slot. And he's he has a PhD in route running, says Steve Smith. He's like, this dude right here. He's got a PhD in route running. Yeah. Probably a hat on his head. Uh, so he thinks he's the best route runner in this class. And being in the slot, that's what, that's pretty much what you need, especially if you're a big dude. So, hey, man, if you're telling me that Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, think that you're the best wide receiver and you're an amazing, the best route runner in the class in the slot, there's a good chance that he's going to catch a freaking 100 balls his rookie year. Yeah. In the but- right situation. I'm gl- I'm glad that I'm glad that you said that too. Um, I had to put 2022 stats, and then I had to go and cross out the the number the the third two and put a one because he didn't play a lot last year. Tyler, he missed a lot of time due to a hamstring. You were just talking about some other col- other college player that was dealing with an injury, Jamar Chase in college, and now we got this guy everyone's pointing fingers at who's a uh, injury. Prone, or not injury prone, but is injured. He's probably going to come in the NFL and just explode. Anyway, so his 2021 stats, um, 80 catches, 1,259 yards, uh, and six touchdowns. He averaged 15.7 yards a catch. The game I have is against Utah, where he had 15 catches, 347 yards, and three touchdowns, and he averaged 23.1 yards per catch. Un- Freaking believable! Remember that from like Halo Two. Oh yeah, Kill Jaro. Oh, freaking! <laughs> I was uh, way better Halo Two than I am Apex. Oh my god. <laughs> um. Okay. So, do you want me to do my comparison first, or do you want to go? Ah, uh, you go, dude. You sound excited. I I am excited just because exactly what you said. Let's go to another person who had a great rookie year, especially the end of the season. Dang and- it. I'm not liking what you're saying. I we don't even know what we have. We don't know each other's comparisons. So I'm on Ross A. Brown. Damn it! <laughs> Literally, that's what I have. USC. Uh, Go for it, Jason. Five eleven, one ninety seven. I couldn't find a lot of. Uh, I couldn't find his forty time. Um, but uh, four point five one. Oh, okay. I think that was at his pro day, though. It, yeah, it had to be because I was just looking up like a combine. Um. Yeah, this guy reminded me a lot of Amon Ron St. Brown. You know, I love me some St. Brown. He's a USC boy, but it looks like there's a good chance that Jax is going to be playing a lot in the slot too, and he's going to probably be doing some jet sweeps just like Amon Ron St. Brown. But that's one thing about 
you just gave me the 40 time for a month, St. Brown. It's not great, but the route running, the Dude. route running and the concentration, the adjustment, Tyler, he's a possession wide receiver. I can see the uh, uh, I can see the same thing happening to Jackson. And there's a reason that Amon Ra went in the second and third round is because he's smaller, you know? And yeah. Like, and he ran a four or five or whatever. This guy's got like all the pedigree, everything you could ask for. And he's bigger. So it's like, if you could tell me I could draft a bigger Amon or Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, yeah, dude, like uh, sign me up. So as far as our number two wide receiver, I think he earns that. And then uh, where's he going? Where I think he's going to go, Jason. I think that if Skoronsky, the offensive tackle is, uh, you know, taken and Broderick Jones is already taken. I think the Packers are going to take, they've got all these picks coming in and now the Lions are, you know, offense is, I don't know. I just, I feel like they might be changing and they, and they really want to make um, Jordan Love look good. You know, it's not like they know they have, like they knew Aaron Rodgers wouldn't be great. They just like, Oh, here's some second and third round wide receivers. They're like, Oh my God, we need to get, we need to look like we did the right thing. Let's give him the best chance possible. I would say offensive tackle first. But if those two uh, top offensive tackles are gone, I could see them going in Jigba, and I almost guarantee those two offens offensive tackles are going to be gone. And the Packers, you know, they just moved up two spots, so they're at the 13th pick. Oh, my God. You are correct, Jason, and that is insane because I had the Jets taking Broderick Jones because, you know, protecting Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. So they this could be this could switch. I could see it. Maybe the Packers will pick up in Jigba. And or uh, the Jets will pick up in Jigba, and then the Packers will pick up uh, Broderick Jones. Ooh. Either way, that's the way I would go, because it's like both situations. They want to make, they want to look right. They want to give their quarterback the, as much help as possible. Just think about Garrett Wilson and uh, Nick Jigba on the same field once more, ah. battling side by side. And then, um, Jason, I've got a, and then my third wide receiver is. Pretty clear cut. And I talked about him earlier, about the Vikings wanting him. I think that Jordan Addison is the, Addison is the number three wide receiver this year. Jordan Addison from USC. He did start off his college career at Pitt. Um, Jordan Addison, what I saw from his uh, tapes, uh, he's definitely a deep threat. He looks fast. And he could definitely be used as a runner. When he gets the ball, he looks like he's a, he's like a little mini-sized running back. Um, he's got a nose for the end zone, so when they're at the goal line, I can see some possibilities of some little short pass plays to Jordan Addison. And then um, that's another thing I kind of put. Yeah, the nose for the end zone. He has a nose for the end zone, and he's a screen machine. He's going to be a guy you're going to see <laughs> a field that he's going to get the ball in these screens and just do what you can with it. Become that runner and do what you need to do. His uh, measurements at the NFL Combine, Tyler, he's 5'11". 173 pounds, 4.4940 with a 1.5610 split, and his vertical is 34 inches. And I do want to say, Jason, you said he came from Penn or Pitt? I can't remember. He came from Pitt, right? He, he, for USC, but he started his college career at Pitt. And he played, I think, so one he played inside and one he played outside. One he played slot, one he played on the outside, and he produced on both. Like, yeah. he was dominant. He was really dominant. Inside and outside. So that's a huge plus for him. Uh, he's an all-purpose quarterback. Is, uh, Kenny Pickett. Oh, that's right. And they say that he like he lacks athleticism, but he is athletic, as if that if that makes sense. <laughs> and but he's a he's the second best route runner. Like him and Njigba are almost like tied. Or no, no, sorry. Njigba was the best route runner. This guy is like the second best route runner in this in this, according to Steve Smith and other wide receivers. And then if you can get him going early, he can take over a game. But if he say he doesn't get fed early and stuff, he can kind of disappear. That's the only kind of knock that I've seen on him. And then Jason, uh, what kind of stats did he have? All right. So in 2022, he only had 59 receptions for 875 yards, eight touchdowns, 14.8. He actually had better stats when he played for Pitt. But I think that also is just the scheme of the offense because you know, Caleb uh, Williams as your quarterback, he was really spreading the ball a lot, and he was also doing runs too. So it's not like he – it's like he wasn't the main focus, you know. Um, the game I have is him against UCLA where he had 11 receptions, 178 yards, and one touchdown. He averaged 6.2 yards per catch. 
All right. Um, your comparison? Who you, yeah, who does he remind you of? I went first last time. You have to go. Dude. Tyler Lockett. Oh, you son of a. Because I was like, oh, man, like the way this guy finds like the soft, the soft spots, are like, uh, like all over the field, you know? And if you tell me like Tyler Lockett literally is a tiny wide receiver that can play outside and be super successful, right? And they can go in the slot and kill it there. So just those two things right there, like finding open areas and then um, in it in and out. And then I went to the, uh, you know, the size 5'10", 182 for Lockett, you know, 5'11", 173 for Addison. So Lockett's in shorter, 10 pounds heavier. Lockett only ran a 4440. I was like, man, I watched dude. Lockett probably ran like a 429. No. And yeah. so, you know, he's a little bit faster than Addison, but not much. So they, they were very comparable players. And, uh, you know, Tyler Lockett has been known to take over a game, Jason, get three touchdowns and like 200 yards. Yeah. Good comparison. That was, that was one that came up on my mind too. But part of the, my problem, Part of my problem is every time I see Tyler Lockett, I see the ball spot on the top of his head. And I'm just like, <laughs> he's too old. He, or he's not old enough to be a Tyler Lockett, this Addison. Um, so what I did is like I looked at the dude's calves, and he didn't have anything. But yet he could still jump, have a vertical <laughs> of 34 inches. And so there's only one other person out there that reminds me of Jordan Addison's small legs and his vertical leap, and that's Devontae Smith. So but you're then- compared to Devontae Smith? Devonte Smith. Oh my God, that's, that's like, great, dude. That pin that you just did—it was when I did Devonte Smith. I was like, I know that's what I was thinking. Yeah, you already knew. Um, Devonte Smith. He is taller. <laughs> He's taller, but he weighs less. But he had the speed. I saw the same speed in um, Smith and Addison when they were going deep, and I saw a couple of catches that Addison would do, um, kind of just like jumping in the air, and it just reminded me of Devonte Smith too. And they both did a lot of screens. Um, on their offense last year. What was Devontae Smith's 40 again? What was that? I don't know. I couldn't find it. I was like, I bet you that guy was like 4-3 something. Uh, but I like that, Jason. I mean, Addison's an amazing player. So, I mean, it's not a knock on either of them, really. Um, are, you, are you looking it up right now? No, sorry. Wife's Texan. So, um, where's he going to go, though? I've heard oh, where's rumors. Addison? Yeah going the vikings i mean i know that i know they want another wide receiver they just got rid of thielen and uh i wish they would pick up who's my number one flowers i would love that that's like i said but i don't think they are i just heard way too much stuff about addison i don't maybe it's the way it fits uh you know that dude's i don't even know my head coach's name but i know he was a quarterback's coach for you know cooper cup and all that stuff so who knows I'm totally fine with it. I, I'm actually hoping that the Vikings go offense first round, so I'd be good with that or running back. So you do think he's going? He's going to go to the Vikings? I do, and it's a uh, number. The Vikings are picking number twenty-three. First round. Yes, right after the Ravens, who also might need a wide receiver, even right. though even though they just got even though they just got Odell Beckham. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, do you want to take a quick break and we'll finish up the last two? We got two more receivers, people. Two so, more. you already made it this far. Keep on coming back. And before we leave, I want to give a quick shout out to Jenny Brown. Hey, thank you so much. Let's uh, get the women in this uh, subscribers up, 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 up. Mm-hmm. I mean, just like my wife and his, you know, our wives and our sisters. So, let's go, so girls. Much. And then John Hubbard. Uh, you're probably, you guys, both of you guys aren't making it this far, but hey. Thank you so much for subscribing. We really appreciate it. Yes, and we will be right back, Tyler. Right, right back. Right back. Are you okay? Are you okay? What's up, people? Hope you like this show. If you do, you're probably not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we went over the top three wide receivers, top five running backs, down to two more people. And like we said, we're going to dive into the running backs way deeper before the draft. And we're going to dive into the wide receivers way, way deeper before the draft. You're talking about the fantasy football draft, correct? Fantasy football draft in August, because this is where you get value, folks. You get value in rookies. Yeah. And uh, next up, Jason, Josh Downs is is my number four wide receiver. He is a tiny dude again, 
super, you know, super tiny. Yeah. What do you think about him? Um, Josh Downs from University of North Carolina, Tar Heels. Um, what, the things I took away from his tape, his attributes, he's very quick. He's a quick little guy. He had good hands. He also, he's one of the wide receivers that reaches out to catch the ball. You know, I like those. Um, he's one of those guys that could turn something small into something big. Um, and, of course, his route running was great. I loved his route running. Um, his measurements, he's 5'9", 171 pounds. His 40 was 4.48. His 10-yard split was 1.49, so he's very quick when they say hike. And uh, his vertical, Tyler, his vertical is a 38.5. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, we'll see about that. Um. Yeah, dude. So, the number one thing I heard about him is that he is the footwork king, Jason. Like, the footwork king. And the last wide receiver that like had such an amazing footwork, I'll talk about in a second. He is my comp. <laughs> but yeah, so he's not going to be your number one wide receiver. Um. But it's almost like a Jahan Doxson type of dude, you know. He's going to be a little – he's not going to be like a super dominant boom, 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 just overpowering people. He's just going to use footwork. He's just going to be open all the time. So yeah. I really like Josh Downs just kind of being like maybe not the focal point of your offense, but just like, you know, what the Vikings need or something like that. You know, if you're just trying to take pressure off of Stephon Diggs, you know, like uh, draft Josh – or, you know, Josh Downs and put him with Josh Allen and – see what happens like that kind of stuff i think he's a he's a pressure relief valve for an amazing wide receiver perfectly said can't agree more yeah okay thanks jason what were your stats like uh my stats for this kid were straight up amazing for any remember these stats when this guy when ppr drafts are happening um 2022 94 receptions 1200 1029 yards and 11 touchdowns and he averaged 10.9 yards a carry or a reception and just so you know the season before that tyler he had a 101 receptions um the game i have is against clemson where he had 11 receptions for 100 yards he averaged nine yards uh a catch um do you want to do the comparison first or me i i think i was last first last time who do you think you, who does he remind you of all right comparison Cole Beasley. Huh. 5'8", 100. Prime Cole Beasley. Uh, what'd you say? I said prime Cole Beasley, not that uh, old prime. stuff. Dallas Cowboy, prime Beasley. Because there was a lot of, like, diving catches I saw and concentrations. Like, you know, there was times where, like, uh, Cole Beasley was, like, diving in the end zone and, uh, and he'd catch it and his kneecap was the only thing that hit in the touchdown <laughs> the, on, on the field and it got a touchdown. There was another catch that he had where he caught it like this behind his back. And I saw Downs do a couple of the same stuff. And some of the route running I saw was very similar. Um, Cole Beasley's 5'8", 175 pounds. Um, his 40 time was 4.49. His 10-yard dash was 1.57. And his vertical was 38. So they had, like, the same vertical. Yeah, I like that, Jason. I mean, I'm surprised Cole Beasley had a 38-inch vertical. That is very surprising to me. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, dude, I mean, you get a white dude and, like, a redhead white dude. I mean, what are the odds? So, anyways, what I went about Footwork King, I'm stealing this one from uh, Steve Smith because when you go to the measurables, Santana Moss is an inch taller and, like, 20 pounds heavier, and he ran, like, a 4.35. So, Santana Moss has better measurables, but when you watch these dudes on the football field, they play very similar, Jason. Just like you're like, oh, all he has is, like, a kneecap. Like you remember Santana Moss making that crazy catch in the Super Bowl, that kind of stuff. So, as far as footwork goes, the last time Steve Smith, like he studies wide receivers, last time he saw footwork like this was a Santana Moss, and Santana Moss was the focal point for an offense, but he was also larger and worked the outside a lot. We're gonna we're gonna have to see how he's used. So, this guy he this guy could go either way, um, as far as I'm concerned, um, but. I would love to draft him on my fantasy team. I think he's definitely draft worthy. I don't think he's going to go undrafted in fantasy. Yeah, I think uh, what I saw a lot from Josh Downs is like he was another guy. He was like a screen machine. He was just is like give this guy the ball and let him do something. That's why I like screen machine. Yeah, and from what I saw a lot is that like he would turn something that looked like it was nothing, like a two or three yard gain, and he would turn it to uh, 10, 20 yards, even a uh, six yard touchdown. When I saw in some of his highlights. All right, dog. So getting through this, like we said, 
you know, you probably don't want to watch this stuff it's so late. We don't care. We're going to give it to you anyways. Quentin <laughs> Johnson, Jason. So the tallest, this is like your typical number one wide receiver. And I have him as my number five. How do you feel about him? Quentin Johnston from TCU. Uh, first thing I put, he's like, he's a big body. Oh, yeah. Big body. He could do a spectacular catch. We saw, he, ha- he has a, this is what I put, Tyler. He has a spec- spectacular catch icon. I wrote that down. Heck yeah. Um, saw him do uh, mossed. He mossed a few defenders. Um, he's definitely got, he'll get you the yards after the catch. He's got the long stride when he's running. Um, I see him beat a lot of double teams. And I think that's mainly because of his size. He's able to, you know, he's taller than most of the defenders out there. Um, and he had a very signature spin move. I swear to gosh, I saw this spin move 50 times in a 10 minute highlight. Um, and he's a type of guy too, that also, he, I saw him reach out to catch the ball sometimes. And, you know, I like that. Um, his measurements, Tyler, he's 6'3", 208 pounds and his vertical is 40 inches. Yeah, and he runs about four uh, four five forty, so it's not like you know he's some freak. Uh, but what what I got from him is I'll be watching the tape, you know, him versus whatever. One play he looks amazing, the next play he does not look amazing. You know, it's like he's very inconsistent, and that's what you know Steve Smith was saying the same thing. So like he just confirmed what I saw with my eyes, and uh, the. One of the worst things about him, because like he, he reminds me of this guy, the comp is, you know, we'll talk about him, but he goes up in the air like a lot of times when he doesn't even need to. And then he ends up catching the ball like in his stomach, in his chest. I want him to be like, have awareness, you know, like always catch the ball with your hands, like know when you need to jump and stuff. Like he jumps too early. Just kind of weird, man. He just kind of, Steve Smith had such an issue with him catching balls in his chest. Yes. That's, that's something that you sh- gotta not. <laughs> You can't do as a wide receiver. I'm agreeing with you, Tyler, because I noticed a lot on the deep passes that he was not using his hands and he was more catching it with his chest. And you want yeah. want the hands. And he would like, he'll catch it in his body and then just like hit the ground like freaking Lego tower, Jason. Like a freaking Lego tower. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. What are his stats like? So you would think with this guy, with his big body and <laughs> stuff that he could do that he would, uh, have a crazy stat line. I mean, he only had 60 receptions and 1,069 yards and six touchdowns. And 2020, 2022, he averaged 17.8 yards per catch. Um, I had in the, uh, the other stat for, for a game I had, it was against Kansas City, where he did have 14 receptions, 206 yards and one touchdown. Um, he pretty much, like, tore it up that game. I saw the highlight, but... Yeah, Tyler, uh, the one thing I wanted to talk about this is this guy's famous spin move. Before we go into comparisons, this guy, like when he wasn't running a deep pass, he was running 10 yards and he'll turn around and he'll catch the ball, right? And the defender is right behind him and he's coming after him. And it, every time, he did this every time, catch it, sp- quick spin right, quick spin right every time. And he would just spin right, run, spin right, run. When you're in the NFL and you got you to get tape, <laughs> you got tape on that, you're not going to be able to use that as much as you did in college level. So that's definitely going to have to change too. You're going to have to figure out something else. Maybe just catching fall straight to the ground. <laughs> but yeah, because that spin move is not going to look work on veterans. So because it is, I mean, I can't, I, I can't remember which wide receiver used to do that a lot in fantasy football. You know, in the NFL. But it's not like he chose one side all the time. It was like depending on which way you're going. He always went against the grain. So you know, you're running to the whatever, then you always go against it, and like that's kind of hard to defend. But, yeah, if you're always telegraphing the same move, dude, like, you're going to get killed out there. And, yeah, we'll see. I, anyways, Jason. He was just like Zoolander. He always he only went to the right. It's like, how did you get here? I turned right three times until I <laughs> yeah. was the head of the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's, who's your comparison? Uh, we spoke about I, I talked about it, dude. So, Mike Williams is 6'4" you know, 218. This guy is 6'3", 205. Mike Williams only ran a 4'5", 940, Jason. This guy, you know, did a 4'5", and I wouldn't have him so high, but I feel like I need to get really deep into the wide receivers before I don't put him so high because he was he was like number one, number two on a lot of people's lists, dude. I was kind of crazy. 
And then I listened to Steve Smith. Steve Smith is like, I don't get it, dude. I don't know why people like this guy. He's like inconsistent, blah, 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 blah. And when I saw him with his hair and everything, I was like, Mike Williams. And then I was like, oh man, like one times he's good and one times he's bad. Mike Williams. And the way he catches deep balls sometimes, like he doesn't know what he's doing. He just jumps up in the air and he'll catch it in his gut and land on his back. And then he'll be out for three games, you know? So Mike Williams is my comp and that's not bad. You know, he's going to be a, num- a team's number one wide receiver. It's just, um, can you really trust that? Like now Mike Williams is like, he got a lot of love last year and he did not live up to that. So now his ADP is actually dropping. So I don't know where you want to put this. He could be good. He could be bad. And that's a mystery. Like I put mystery right here. What do you think my comparison is? Mike Williams. Is it really? Mike Williams. And it's basically everything you just said. I mean, like every time this guy jumped up to catch the deep ball, like we talked about before, he, he would catch it with his chest and he would land on his back. And I'm like, this guy is broken. I broke my back. (laughs) Broke my back. <laughs> you know, he uh when it was more kind of like the drag routes or going over the middle, there was times I would see them like reach out and catch the ball. Um, which I want, but you also want to see that like throughout your entire game, especially when you're in the deep ball. When, when it was a deep ball, it these two do not care. They're just like, I'm gonna out jump you because Mike Williams vertical is it was like something crazy. Where did I have it at? Actually, it's not really that crazy. It's only three uh 32.5 inches but he's like i'm gonna out jump you because i'm taller than you and i'm gonna catch this ball and you're gonna slam me to the ground but at least i catch it right Mm -hmm. and this is the same thing that you're gonna see from quentin and then when i look at these stats and i only see i could see this being mike williams stat line in a season 60 receptions 1069 yards and six touchdowns i could see that being mike williams stat in uh in one of his in one of his seasons so they are very, you know, and one thing about Mike Williams is, like, he's going to have a game where he's going to get you 30 points of fantasy football, then the next game he's going to get you three. This guy Dude. looks like he's going to be doing the same thing for an Exactly. NFL. So that's that's amazing, man. We had, like, three comps almost mm-hmm. without talking to each other about it. So that's that's crazy, dude. Because I, I, all out of all the players, we're not just reaching back. We're reaching back through history. Yeah. So uh, where do I think he'll go, Jason? Yes. I don't, so I think that he's going to go, I think that people see the same things that, that we see. And um, I think that there's a clear drop off after those first four people, even though size, this guy, this is like the one of the only guys that is like a true size wide receiver this year. I think the saints might get him um, number 29. uh, Cause their defense has played so well. And, you know, Derek Carr's new there. They want to, like, you know, they want to give Derek Carr the best chance, all that stuff. They've got Chris Olave. They got Michael Tom- Thomas. But I don't know if they're going to rely on Michael Thomas again this year. Uh, so if you got Chris Olave with a dude like this, I think that'd be one of the best duos in the NFL. If you got him with Michael Thomas, and then you're, oh my God, dude, like, what do you do with all these people? You're going to put, or who are you going to put in the slot? Michael Thomas, I guess. I'm not really sure. So yeah. that sounds pretty good to me. I think it, by getting uh, Quentin Johnson to the Saints, I think the Saints are like, all right, Michael Thomas, this is it. Do your thing or get out. We got I think it's, it's, it could be twofold, Jason. You're right. Like Now that you say it like that, it could be pressure on Michael Johnson. Like, hey, we already have your replacement, dude, whatever. Michael Thomas. Um, Thomas. Yeah, Michael, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm looking at my back right. as he's done. <laughs> uh, oh, and helping out the new wider. And they want to make sure, like, you know, I just gave that stat about how uh, – Dalton was not that big of a downgrade from Carr. Like they're almost the same players. So they want to look right too. You know, they gave Derek Carr all this money. Dra- draft the young wide receiver and see what happens. And I and that is it, people. I think we're done it's with like, the previews. It's five running backs, five wide receivers. That's the top that we have right now. But like I said, after we, after the, all the situations play out, we're gonna go really deep into all these. And Friday for beer time breakdown, we got a uh, we're gonna break down the draft. What we thought, likes, dislikes. That's yeah. just, I love draft time. Oh. oh, I've watched it. I even watched it before I watched football. I would always just like, we always had the NFL network and I would always watch all the pre draft stuff and then watch the draft night. And it's like, I didn't, then I would never watch them again. Yeah. Then, you know, 18 years ago or whatever, I got into fantasy football and oh my God. They always had Mike, 
Michael uh, Mel Kuyper Jr. on there, and they always show the freaking time that he called out like some Colts pick, and he's like, "That's a horrible pick," and blah blah blah, and he ended up doing like horrible. And now we're now we could be those people, Jason. Mm-hmm. We're putting ourselves out on video for the world to see. We could be completely wrong. We're gonna be on ESPN, and we're just gonna be like, oh, "We're I don't know. I'm just happy to be here." <laughs> I'll do. You want me to fight with Skip Bayless? I'll take the opposite side and yell a lot. Let's yeah. get. Yeah, I could do that. All right. So, thank you so much for watching. Please come in and after the draft and watch our beer time breakdown. We'll be getting drunk, talking about what we liked and didn't like from the first two rounds of the draft. I'm pretty sure they do two rounds the first day. So they do one. No, they just do one. All the big trades happen the next day to go up to number two, uh, number one of the second round mm-hmm. to get Roger Saffold and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yep, it's going to be fun. We're going to do it. I'm looking forward to it. Catch you on the flip side. On the dark side of the moon. <laughs>